so we're getting ready for lunch. So I drove back down to Silver Lake, where I used to live, because um, it's here where I really started building stuff from the ground up. I used to repair a lot of things in Philly, but I never really built that much new stuff. And it was when I was living in Silver Lake and working at a studio that I really started building pedals and getting into reading schematics and, and digging deeper from like what I just knew as a repair tech to what I knew as a, what I wanted to know as a designer. Um, so I came back, I decided to visit Garage Pizza, my old favorite pizza place when I was down here. And it gives me a little bit of an opportunity to talk to you about uh, the design process and, and kind of what it means to, to design something from zero. So I was working down here in this little studio called Red Star. Shout out to Red Star, David Kalish. And uh, David had a pedal that somebody had DIY'd for him a long time ago. He didn't know anymore and he wanted another one for his touring rig. So um, he asked me if I could figure it out because I was kind of the repair tech around the studio at the time. And it was the first time I kind of had to pull apart a circuit and, and try to figure out like what it was. Um, Fortunately, it was pretty easy. It was just maybe six or seven components, and it ended up to be something really generic uh, called a Tillman Boost. I'll, I'll tell you what that is. Okay, now we've pulled over at the lovely Silver Lake Reservoir to show you some more. So Don's circuit is a really simple little FET amplifier. There's no, here's the input here. There's no gate resistor uh, because it's designed to go directly um, uh, inside the guitar connected to the guitar's uh, output. There is a little bias resistor. Boop. Reference to ground. There is a little emitter resistor. Boop. Reference to ground. There's a resistor going this way. That goes up to power. This is your output. There's a little cap on the output to remove the DC. And there's a, uh, a load resistor. Also reference to ground. Oops, my little pen. And then there's your output. Super simple. Sounds super great built by everybody for a long time. So the Till Circuit is uh, really nicely tweaked for guitar and people are putting it in a lot of things for a long time. But when you start to really look closely at it and start to pull it apart, you know, it bears a lot of resemblance to just sort of the general common emitter amplifier that would have been in the data sheet for the original FET usage guides from Bell Labs, you know, in like the 40s. It's really similar to like Echoplex preamps that nobody will shut up about. It's really similar to the input stage of an 1176. It's really similar to just a general FET amplifier. So what you realize is that you can go back to the data sheet, just figure out what makes it work, and then instead of basing it off of Don's design, you can just start with a blank sheet of paper. Bonus content, I just saw someone walking with an I'm with Stupid t-shirt, the classic I'm with Stupid t-shirt, but they weren't with anybody, and that, I thought that was really funny. So that's the point in which you say, I recognize that all these circuits that I like the sound of have JFETs in them, uh, so I'm going to try to make something out of a JFET, but I'm not going to look at Doug's design, I'm not going to look at the Echoplex preamp design, I'm not going to look at the other things that are in there, because they're basically just tweaked versions of... Uh, how the data sheet tells you to get signal through the darn thing to begin with. So all you really have to do is learn how to bias it up, and from there you can kind of do whatever you want. And it, um, if you can make it into something you like, then then you win. So that's sort of what I mean when I say it's just as easy to design from a blank sheet of paper as it is to clone something, because if you identify a topology you're interested in, all you really got to do is go back to the data sheet for the manufacturer of that component figure out how to pass signal through it and then just start riffing on it and um, seeing what you come up with. So that's why we're on the 210 freeway now headed back up the mountain to the workshop so I can tell you a little more about it. But first we're going to stop and deliver undies to our friend. All right, the coffee's just about done. So uh, we're back at the uh, lab and uh, we're going to pour a cup of coffee and um, show you some more about uh, where the design comes from. So we're looking at Don's circuit again, and I guess what I mean is like, what makes this Don's circuit is the value of this, and 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 which FET you chose for the center of the circuit. But 
This is also essentially how they tell you to make a common emitter amplifier. So when you don't know the values, you um, put everything here. When you don't know the values, this is just you know the the five things you need to make a JFET pass signal, and so you you just delete these values and start over. So you turn to a new page and you say, well, I know that I want to have a FET because that's basically the sound I like, right? Or the sound I'm going for in this pedal. That means that I need these things. I'm probably going to need a gate resistor because this isn't going to be directly inside the guitar, so there might be DC over here. So that means I'm going to need a little resistor here. It means I'm going to need a pull-down resistor. I might need a cap in series with the input resistor. That means I'm going to need a cap in series with the output resistor. I might want to put a cap here to um, make it make more gain. I got to figure out what voltage I want. In this case, the front end of JFET, my JFET, runs off of 12 volts. Also, this configuration is inverting. So I know that I'm going to want to flip it around because I believe that pedals should have absolute phase. But what that probably means for me is that I'm going to use an op amp stage. And then once you have a one op amp and a dual package, you might as well have a second op amp stage. And then you can put stuff up here to shape the tone a little bit. And then you have one op amp stage to flip it around, one non-inverting stage to drive the output. And then you got a whole design. So it may seem like it's easier said than done, but if you're a person who knows how to um, solder, you can, you can get back to zero and start over on your own thing pretty simply. And that's what I like to do. Um, it's hard to come up with anything that is like a wildly different topology that has never been used for anything because honestly, solid state amplifiers were pioneered in the 40s by people with, you know, several doctorates and... Um, and they, they laid out the ways you can do it. Uh, but what's important to me are the details and the effort of like, I'm going to try to make my own thing. I'm going to start to make my own thing. So then where you start the design from is like, I know I want to use a common emitter JFET. And I know I want to run it off plus 12 to get the regular common emitter configuration that I like. I know I'm going to use op amps on the back end. So I'll run those off plus minus 12, so I have 24 volts of swing like an Eve, and then I can get a lot of good output level. I know that I'm going to use the types of caps that I normally like that I, you know, because there's, there's types of capacitors I like the sound of better, you know, and then essentially what you're left to do is tweak resistor values and change some caps until you find that, that you like what you've created. And, and in a lot of ways, it's, it's not really based off of anything other than the existence of the component itself. So it can be frustrating sometimes to talk about design because a person will see a JFET and they'll say it's an Echoplex or a person will see, you know, two op amps and they'll say it's a tube screamer or they'll see a clean path going around a distortion stage and they'll say it's just like a clon. And it's not really true and it's incredibly reductive and, and I think like rude to talk about things like that because it's like, you know, if you take enough components off, there's not really any difference between a radio flyer wagon and a 1974 Triumph TR6 in British racing green with a tan top and wire wheels, which coincidentally is what you can send me for my birthday if you want.